Hi everybody, it's Renee Mason, and I wanted to do a sweet and condensed version of the briefing I did the other day at our NCMS WDC briefing. We did a insider threat theme. Can't speak. Sorry, we did an insider threat theme on insider threat programs for large businesses, small businesses, and then we had a vendor prevent a continuous monitoring solution. So I just wanted to go through it again, just so all the attachments that I'm going to send you make sense, and you kind of know how to incorporate them into your program. So an overview again, Mason Byte currently provides human resources, information technology, web design, and more facility security officer support services. And I say more because most of these contracts that you see here, most of these companies, we're currently providing FSO support for. Um, a lot of small businesses have folks that are the president and they're also the uh, contract support guy on the actual contract or whatever the case may be. So they don't really have time to handle all the things that go along with being an FSO, which you guys know because you do them. So that's one of the, the main services that we provide for folks. So the plan of attack again for the briefing is just to highlight the things that small businesses have to deal with. And if it seems like I'm skipping over stuff, it's because I am. There are a lot of things that the small businesses that I deal with don't have to worry about, like the information systems and that type of thing. So we're going to attack this briefing from a literally a small business perspective, just talking about the things that small businesses have to deal with. The Insider Threat Program. So I'm not really going to talk too much about the slide because, again, the program had to have been effective by November. So if you're not there yet, let me know. I'll send you my briefing. You can pretty much copy and paste. <laughs> Just swap out Mason Byte for whatever your company's name is. Uh, but your Insider Threat Program would have had to be established, and you should have already endorsed or uh, chosen somebody to be the Insider Threat Program senior official. Uh, the thing that I wanted to touch on, or the thing that I did touch on during the briefing, is this little section right here, which is the change condition. And so basically, that to me shows that your program is growing. You, From the day that you started your program, you're going to review it. You're going to do it a couple of times. You're probably going to take some stuff out. You're going to add some stuff in that may or may not be working, whatever the case may be. But that chunk right there of your program kind of shows DSS or management, whoever, that your program is evolving and that you understand that it's not a stagnant thing. It's going to change over time when you, you know, maybe if you pull on a continuous monitoring solution like TKO or something to that effect, you want to incorporate that into your plan to show that it is more robust than it was when it started. The uh, training and the uh, not the training, I'm sorry, the gathering of insider threat information across the facility, That those two, three chunks right there, the 1-202A, 1-300, and 1-304, I think that this spreadsheet basically, for us at least, encompasses all of this. And again, all the companies that I support are small, and so they don't necessarily have money to buy a huge solution like what Lockheed created for $3.8 million dollars. Um, or the system that the uh, other speaker was talking about that they have that cost approximately 500k. Small businesses just don't have that kind of money. And if they do, they're going to spend it on something that makes more sense and something that pulls money into the business, whereas security, as you know, we tend to spend money. So this spreadsheet, again, uh, kind of lays out for you each of the 13 adjudicative guidelines. And the spreadsheet that I'm going to send to you has a hyperlink which will take you to each one of those um, adjudicative guidelines again. So it'll give you a kind of a synopsis of what each of those means if you just want to review and make sure that you're not uh, putting something in the wrong section. And also so that if you're using the spreadsheet the way I intend to use it, which would be to share it amongst all of our ISWIG members, so our human resources, our finance rep, uh, IT rep, that kind of thing, so that they can just click on that hyperlink and see, okay, well, foreign influence, means this versus foreign preference means this and you, know, you can kind of get more information about that so the other goal of this spreadsheet is to put it in a location where it's it can be secured but can still be accessed by each of these different departments so i know sometimes companies are really compartmentalized and there isn't a place where all of this information is housed but the goal of this would be so that as soon as something happens your hr person can go in there and say okay, Jane Smith got a PIP on May 17, 2016. And then, of course, when you have your monthly meeting, you'll go ahead and talk about all that again, but you as HR 
can check this spreadsheet throughout the week just to see if anything is new, anything new has been added, or hopefully your HR person will just come and say, hey, I added a, a PIP on the on the Excel spreadsheet, just so you know, I can give you some of the details about that. But just so you're not waiting for a month to find out what's happening, especially if there's something that has security ramifications or an adverse information that you're going to have to do a report on. So that's pretty much the, the gist of that spreadsheet. The TKO over here, uh, again, they were the vendor that we brought out to speak about continuous monitoring. Their tool is actually pretty cool. It's something that we've incorporated into all of our plans. And it basically allows us to um, do employee reporting without the employees reporting. So most of our employees are pretty good about telling us when they're going on foreign travel or, or that type of thing, but they might not want to tell us that they got a DUI or that you know, they had some kind of arrest or something to that effect. So TKI pulls from over 250,000 resources that are open source resources, resources. So courthouses, uh, police records, that kind of thing, whatever is open source. And they're able to run the person's name and date of birth and tell you, okay, well, this person actually got a DUI last month or this person got arrested for assault or whatever the case may be, they can run that report for you. And since they're not really doing a background investigation in the true sense of the word, you don't have to have the employee's permission. They don't have to sign a sheet saying, I give you permission to pull my background report and credit report because they're not doing credit reports and they're not doing a true background report. They're just pulling information from open source, social media, that kind of thing. And they could tell you, okay, well, this employee didn't report this, but this happened or whatever the case may be. And they also have another layer of their program, which is pretty cool because they let you assign um, almost like a weighted value for, for some of your employees. So if you have a, an employee who's cleared at the TS level and they're working out on a site, they their incidents might be a little more, um, how to say it, their incidents are going to be a little heavier, I'd say, than somebody who has a secret clearance who's working out on a site, but they're just a receptionist or something like that. And they may not have access to all of the classified information, but they need to do it because they're in JPAS and they're dealing with visit, whatever the case may be, they let you assign a weighted value to your folks. The example they gave during the briefing was if you have a driver of a trucking company who hadn't DUI, that of course is going to mean a lot more than if you have, uh, you know, uh, somebody who sits at a desk all day that got a DUI because they're not dealing with trucks for your business. They're not dealing with driving for your business. So each of those kind of has a different weight. So the insider threat uh, training and the self-inspection, the, the contractor reviews annual self-inspection, those are also, um, of course, tools that are already out there. CDSC just revamped the insider threat and the self-inspection handbook, I'm sorry. And so you'll see when you go in there now, they ask for a validation for each of the different things. They've incorporated all the insider threat um, aspects. You know, are you doing the insider threat? Who's your ITSPO? Are they trained? Are they the ones? That kind of thing. They, they've covered that. But I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware there are a ton of tools out there. And you can Google insider threat and prevention and a ton of tools pop up. One of the big ones is the CERT guide. CERT is a Carnegie Mellon's um, Software and Engineering Institute created the CERT division. And their whole goal is basically insider threat. So they are expensive. Uh, they can come out and do an assessment for you. But without having to pay anything, you can get a lot of information from their website. They actually have a couple of books on there that they've released. They have a lot of information on how to do the program, certain things to look for, anything you can think about insider threat wise, they've probably covered. They also do some insider threat training. It's kind of pricey. I think some of the classes start around 2400 in their week long courses, but you can check that out. But without having to pay anything, again, you can just pull a ton of information off of that website. Um, YouTube, that's another one. Uh, you can see in the little picture below when I put in insider threat and training, over 6,800 results popped up. Some of them are kind of chintzy, a little suspect, but there's a ton. So you, you, know, you just have to wave through and kind of see which ones are good, which ones work with your company culture, and which of them don't. Some of the companies I work for would find uh, this video example kind of funny. Some of them would be like, really? So let me play this for you.
All right, so you get the idea, but <clears throat> this is the kind of thing that's just, you know, a little fun thing to send out to your employees uh, just to keep them thinking about um, insider threats and how some of these, uh, some of the things you don't want to do come from the inside, like download suspicious um, messages or pick up random thumb drives laying around in your office suite. So the ISWIG, this is one of the things that I kind of harped on during the, the meeting. I got up on this little soapbox and kind of kept going on it. But I think that for small businesses, the training and education piece is going to be huge. Um, the ISWIG piece is going to be huge because this is going to show DSS that you're able to tie in everything from across the organization. So it's not just you as security dealing with issues that somebody reports as security. It's you dealing with you know, HR issues, somebody gets put on a performance improvement plan or that has issues with their supervisor, that kind of thing. It's finance, it's somebody who continuously has wage garnishments or, you know, the government's after them for, you know, IRS, whatever the case may be. It's going to show that you have stakeholders across the board and that you're taking the time to meet with them and make sure that you're really mitigating any risk that could pop up or if something, you know, somebody has issues and, you know, psychological issues. You can do a little bit of mitigation. You know, you can recommend certain your employee programs for them, whatever the case may be. This is showing that you're actually taking time to meet with the other people. And it's a program that's vested in by everybody at the company because everybody's involved in it. So this example that I have is, is one of the companies that I support. We do a monthly insider threat working group. And so we track minutes and we upload it onto the company's OneDrive or shared drive. And this particular company is pretty cool because our the leadership is really involved and really invested in making sure that we are not one of those companies that has issues or that has somebody that pops up and and then, you know, Snowden happens or Aaron Alexis happens or something like that. We want to make sure that we're not that we're trying to do everything we can to prevent that. So the leadership is really invested and they come to all of the meetings. So right now we have the president and the vice president. We also have myself. And we have a representative from Human Resources. And we go through each of these bullets. I'm going to provide you guys with a copy of these minutes, too. So you can take it and, of course, take off our logo and put yours on there. But these are just some of the highlights that we go through. We literally spend maybe 10 to 15 minutes because we haven't had an issue yet. But we go through, are there any suspicious contact? No. Is anybody going on foreign travel? Yes, this person is going here. Any adverse action reporting, security violations, that kind of thing. Anything HR wants to report, loans, liens, anything like that. We would highlight here and kind of list out here and talk about, and then we'd add it to our minutes and upload it to our uh, OneDrive and, and kind of keep track of it. So when DSS comes out, we can say, hey, look, this is something we do monthly. These are the minutes. We haven't had any issues, but this is us, you know, showing that we have stakeholders across the board for the company and we are vested and care about the program. So we meet, we take the time to go through this. It literally takes 10, 15 minutes, but we do it. This is the uh, training spreadsheet that we use, and again, I'm, I'm also going to send this to you guys so you can edit it and add what you want to it. But the other part of the program that I said is going to be really important for small businesses is, of course, the training. And so the insider threat awareness and the counterintelligence awareness and security briefing are two briefings that are on CDSC or STEP, and we make those mandatory. We have all of our folks, we say, before I'm going to send your VAR for state or before I in give you access in JPAS, you have to complete these trainings. And so these folks will, when they first come on board and I send them the initial briefing and all that, I also send them links to these two trainings and I make sure they know, hey, you can't get out on site until you finish this training. And most people are really good about it and they get that training done. And then what we also do is give them the option to uh, do one elective a year. So they all have to do, each of their sites are different, but most of the clients have their own client training that they make them do. So there's, you know, if they're accessing classified systems, most of the clients will make them go through their version of classified system training. And so I always tell them, hey, let me know if you're doing that because I'll add it to our spreadsheet so we can show that, you know, we have a diversity of, of training going on and not all of it is um, pushed by us, but still it's affecting our our employees because they're, this is another layer of training that they get that we may not necessarily be providing, but they're getting it, so it's important. Um, so you can see from this example, uh, Eager Beaver went ahead and got all of her trainings done. She knocked them out one time. The elective course that she chose was a derivative classification course. Maybe that's what she's going to be doing when she's out on site. 
Uh, she signed up for her STEP account and she is good to go until uh, 2018 when she has to redo all of this. And all of these uh, courses are something that we're going to make our folks do annually. It's not going to be a one and done. It's going to be a, every year you need to go through and do this insider threat training again. And you need to do the counterintelligence awareness, awareness again. You also need to do the cyber, pick your new elective and provide me with whatever training you're doing on site. And this is another one that would be good. We keep it on our share drive or OneDrive or SharePoint, whatever you have that's kind of a system where you can house and, and have all of that there. But this is another one that we keep there. Uh, again, the training is a big aspect of it. And the actual Insider Threat program kind of goes through and lists out the different things that we have to touch on for training. You know, we have to talk about how to detect the importance of detecting an insider threat when it's a cleared employee, the methodologies adversaries use to recruit, indicators that there's insider threat behavior, or that somebody could be doing something a little suspect, um, and then counterintelligence and security reporting requirements, that kind of thing. So one of the things that I talked about during the briefing was not reinventing the wheel. Don't spend all your time going through redoing something when there's so many tools out there that do it for you. These case studies off to the side, these are on the DSS website, DSS and CDSC actually. And so as these cases are coming up, they're adding these really cool one page uh, PDFs on these people. So they'll say, you know, this particular person, um, Hannah Roberts, for example, they'll say this is what this person did. This is ultimately, ultimately what they got charged of. This is their fine. This is how much jail time they're doing. This is what happened. These were the indicators that you'd want to watch for, that type of thing. But they're really good. And so you can just include that in your newsletter. If you're not doing a newsletter, then just, you know, you can see there's a, enough of these for you to send one of these out once a month and say, here's your case study of the month or, you know, insider of the month, whatever the case may be, monthly insider, however you want to do it, Monday insider, I can come up with a million cheesy little examples, but send that out. Don't go through and do your own research and create your own, you know, case studies. They're there for you. DSS does them for you and they update them on a regular basis and add new people. So you have a ton of resources you can use. Just pull it down, send it out to your employees, incorporate it into your newsletter uh, talk about the insider, th you know, the 13 adjudicative guidelines. Do If you do do a newsletter, you can do a chunk of it that's a case study, a chunk of it that talks about one of the adjudicative guidelines and some other thing. And boom, you have a one page security newsletter that you can send out on a monthly basis or however you want to. And all that information is there. You didn't take any time to write out anything. You just copy and pasted it, dumped it in there. And, you know, these are all open source uh, open source tools that are available, open source information. So use what's already out there. Don't go crazy trying to, you know, manage your security program, your HR program, finance program, which is what it tends to be when you're a small business, you're wearing multiple hats. Use what's already out there. Okay, I'm going to step off of that soapbox and go on to the next one. Um, this is just an example of one of the uh, emails that we send out to our employees on a regular basis. This one is in specific is about adverse information behavior or adverse actions. And so what we did is kind of remind our employees that, you know, we have a formalized insider threat program. Uh, you're the biggest um, piece of that program. You're the one that's going to tell us whether somebody's doing something they shouldn't or strange, acting strange or if their personality all of a sudden changed, whatever the case may be, you know that because you deal with that person on a regular basis. And so I send this out periodically and I'm just asking folks to give me the date the incident happened, the person that you're reporting or the name of the person reporting, the subject of the report, the date of the actual incident, and just give me a brief narrative. And if it's something that we need to go back and deal with more than fine, but at least you have this template and you don't have to worry about, you know, filling out this 10 page report. I just need the five W's. We'll make it really simple. Send it back to me. And then if we need to do more, we can. But I send this out to them on a regular basis. So I nobody says, oh, I, I don't know what you need. No, no. You know what I need. You got it right here. No excuses. Uh, this is another example of one of the newsletters we send out. I actually chopped this one a little bit. The first page of this newsletter, uh, our vice president or president will add a little blurb to, which is pretty cool. They'll say, hey, this is a new people that we have starting. This is a company meeting. This particular employee got a reward from the client, whatever the case may be. But then the next page or two pages will be something on security. So this particular one, um, every year this company does their 
annual refresher briefing in person. And so the employees have to bring their passports so we can go through them and make sure that they don't have any unreported foreign travel. I thought that was a genius as an FSO because, you know, how often do you have a, a medium where you can actually verify and prove that somebody did foreign travel? And that to me makes the employees really report their foreign travel because they know this is something that this particular company has been doing for years and we're not going to stop. Our DSS rep thought it was genius and encouraged us to continue it. So it's not going to stop. So just so you save yourself from embarrassment, tell me you're going somewhere. It's really that simple. But but anyway, I thought that was a pretty cool idea um, that they're able to do the briefing live and that they ask employees to bring in passports and we kind of verify it. This is another example of an insider threat theme newsletter that I sent out for uh, this particular company. Literally, all I did was take the DSS flyer. They do these two-sided brochures on a ton of different topics, insider threat programs, foreign travel, vulnerability, um, economic espionage, anything you think of, they have these two-page brochures on. It's normally those little trifles that they take with them um, that they give out whenever they come to the briefings or that you see. There's There was a ton of them everywhere <laughs> for a long time. I haven't seen as many because I think they're going a little more virtual. Nonetheless, I, re I just took copy and pasted different chunks of that brochure and added it to this one page newsletter and then added some information specific to the company and added that, hey, if you think there's an insider, report it to your FSO. Here's my contact information that kind of thing. It's super simple. All that information is already out there. I didn't have to type anything. I can't spell for crap. <laughs> like it's a gene that I just don't have. So me writing something out is, is not going to go well. So I literally copy and pasted uh, different chunks of this brochure and just added a couple uh, bits of information that are specific to the company. And that's pretty much it. That's that's the uh, the end of this briefing here. Uh, my contact information is here. Um, again, all these folks that are, I'm gonna send this out to, I'm also gonna send you the uh, training, the insider threat, or I'm sorry, the 13 adjudicative guideline spreadsheet, and I'll send you a copy of what, what we're using right now for our program. Uh, it's not plagiarism in the digital age, it's repurposing. And of course, the caveat to that is, this is specifically with the security program. If you're in school, you don't want to plagiarize anything because you're going to get kicked out. <laughs> but when it comes to security, don't reinvent the wheel. Use what's already out there. There's a ton of great resources, network, meet people. Uh, everybody is doing something a little differently. So you can build your program based off of taking bits and pieces of what other people are doing. Again, my name is Renee Mason, Director of Operation for Mason Byte. Let me know if you have any questions. You can uh, email me, give me a call. I'm more than happy to help. Take care.